Welcome to our KPC Daily Devotional. We've been reading The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis. This is written as a series of letters to a junior tempter in the field from a higher-up devil in the middle management of hell. We have completed the original screw tape letters and now continue to excerpts from Screw Tape Proposes a Toast. The article, Screw Tape Proposes a Toast, was written in 1962, 25 years after Lewis originally penned the Screw Tape Letters. It has, since that time, been added to the end of most editions of the Screw Tape Letters as also the edition I've been using, the 1982 edition by Collier Books from Macmillan Publishing Company. In Screwtape Proposes a Toast, C.S. Lewis looks specifically at the demonic temptations which he sees driving new developments in American education. Education, he points out in the introduction, should be democratic in the sense of being available to all, without distinction of race or sex, class or religion, to all students who show real diligence and ability. But within school, within the classroom, the hard workers and the slackers, the bright and the dull, should not be forced onto the same level just to assuage the inferiority complexes of not the poor students themselves, but of their parents. The deception, the demonic deception, comes when we confuse democracy for what is essentially just the old mortal sin of envy. An excerpt from... Screwtape proposes a toast. Democracy is the word which you must, with which you must lead them by the nose. The good work which our philological experts have already done in the corruption of human language makes it unnecessary to warn you that they should never be allowed to give this word a clear and definable meaning. They won't. It will never occur to them that democracy is properly the name of a political system, even a system of voting, and that this has only the most remote and tenuous connection to what you're trying to sell them. Nor, of course, must they ever be allowed to raise Aristotle's question whether democratic behavior means the behavior that democracies like or the behavior that will preserve a democracy. For if they did, it could hardly fail to occur to them that these two things need not necessarily be the same. You are to use the word purely as an incantation. If you like, purely for its selling power. It is a name they venerate. And of course, it's connected with the political ideal that men should be equally treated. You then make a stealthy transition in their minds from this political ideal to a factual belief that all men are equal, especially the man you're working on. As a result, you can use the word democracy to sanction in his thought the most degrading and also the least enjoyable of all human feelings. You can get him to practice, not only with shame, but with a positive glow of self-approval, conduct which, if undefended by this magic word, would be universally derided. The feeling, I mean, is, of course, that which prompts a man to say, I'm as good as you. The first and obvious advantage is that you thus induce him to enthrone at the center of his life a good, solid, resounding lie. I don't mean merely that his statement is false, in fact, that he is 
no more equal to everyone he meets in kindness or honesty and good sense than in height or waist measurement. I mean that he does not believe it himself. No man who says, I'm as good as you, actually believes it. He would not say it if he did. The St. Bernard never says it to the toy dog, nor the scholar to the dunce, nor the employable to the bum, nor the pretty woman to the plain. The claim to equality outside the strictly political field is made only by those who feel themselves to be in some way inferior. What it expresses is precisely the itching, smarting, writhing awareness of an inferiority which the patient refuses to accept and therefore resents. Yes, and therefore resents every kind of superiority in others, denigrates it, wishes its annihilation. Presently, he suspects every mere difference of being a claim to superiority. No one must be different from himself in voice, in clothes, manners, recreations, choice of food. Yeah. Here's someone who speaks English rather more clearly and euphoniously than I. It must be a vile, upstage, la-di-da affectation. Here's a fellow who, is, who says he doesn't like hot dogs, thinks himself too good for them, no doubt. Here's a man who hasn't turned on the jukebox. Eh, he's one of those goddamn high brows and is going to show it off. If they were honest to God, all right, Joes, they'd be like me. They've no business to be different. It's undemocratic. <laughs> now, this useful phenomenon is in itself by no means new. Under the name of envy, it's been known to the humans for thousands of years. But hitherto, they always regarded it as the most odious and also the most comical of vices. Those who were aware of feeling it felt it with shame. Those who were, were not gave it no quarter in others. The delightful novelty of the present situation is that you can sanction it, making it respectable and even laudable by the incantatory use of the word democratic. What I want to fix your attention on is the vast overall movement towards the discrediting, and finally the elimination of every kind of human excellence, moral, cultural, social, or intellectual. And is it not pretty to notice how democracy, in the sense of an incantation, is now doing for us the work that once used to be done by the most ancient dictatorships and by the same methods? You remember how one of the Greek dictators, they called them tyrants then, sent an envoy to another dictator to ask his advice about the principles of government. The second dictator led the envoy into a field of grain, and there he snicked off with his cane the top of every stalk that rose an inch or so above the general level. The moral was plain. Allow no preeminence among your subjects. Let no man live who is wiser or better or more famous or even handsomer than the mass. Cut them all down to a level, all slaves, all ciphers, all nobodies, all equals. Thus, tyrants could practice, in a sense, democracy. But now... Democracy can do the same work without any tyranny other than her own. No one needs now go through the field with a cane. No, the little stalks will now of themselves bite the tops off the big ones. The big ones are beginning to bite off their own in their desire to be like stalks. I wish you... A good day ahead. Goodbye.